Hi, my name is Curious Chris, and this is the best day of my life. Hey Nick, have you ever noticed how we're able to do a lot of the things that we do? What do you mean? I mean, do things like push stuff or squash stuff in the smaller stuff. Okay, well, that's because of forces. Forces? Yeah, forces. You mean like in Star Wars, how that green Muppet can magically move things? That's a movie. No, forces are push or pull action. They can change an object's speed or direction. Unless the object can't move, then it just changes its shape. I need some visuals to help me understand this. Yeah, try asking on one of the others. I'm trying to get away from these cops right now. Okay. Hey Azuri. Yeah. Do you know much about forces? Oh, you mean the push and pull action that can change its speed, direction, unless it can't move, then it changes its shape. Yeah, that. See this ball? Uh huh. As you can see here, I'm kicking the ball. And the force from my leg is pushing the ball to move, or increase in speed, or accelerate. When I kick it this way, the force from my leg is pushing the ball to change its direction. I can also step on the ball to stop it from moving. Ah, oh, I get it. We can use our arms and legs to hit something, and that force can cause it to either speed up, or accelerate, or change direction. Now, you wanna play some soccer? Cool. Woo! I'm so tired. That was fun. Hey, why can't I kick the ball from under you? It's because the force I'm pushing down with the ball is greater than the force you are kicking the ball. Oh, and I also noticed that the ball seems to be a bit flatter. That's because if an object can't move at all, it deforms or changes its shape, and my downward force from my butt is changing the ball into a flatter state. Oh, so if an object can't move, it deforms or changes its shape? If it can't change shape, if it's something really solid like a steel block, then probably it can't change shape unless you apply, apply a massive amount of force. Good point. See you later, dude. Why does everything always fall to the ground? Life would be so much easier if it just floated. Not really. How do you mean? What you're talking about is a force called gravity. It's a non-contact pulling action between two bodies of mass. Gravity? Mass? What is mass? Oh, mass is just an amount of matter an object is made out of. Okay, so this gravity is the attraction of two objects made out of matter. Technically, every object that has mass has a slight gravitational pull, but it's tiny in comparison to Earth. The Earth has an enormous mass, which means that it has a very large gravitational pull. Okay, so because of the gravitational pull of the Earth, everything is being pulled towards the ground. Yeah, your pillows, that TV, even us humans, we are all being pulled towards the Earth. Wouldn't life be so much easier if there wasn't this gravitational pull? Not really. Without it, we all will be floating. Wouldn't life be harder then? Imagine sleeping and your head bumping to the ceilings. That would hurt. Yeah, you make a good point. What are you doing with those pillows anyway? Oh, just washing them. How about... These scales say I weigh 69 kilograms, so is that my mass? No, that's your weight. What's the difference? Your weight is just your mass multiplied by the gravitational force of the Earth. So in reality, your mass is just some other number. Okay, so the Earth's gravity is falling down on me with 69 kilograms of force. Technically, no. Your weight isn't measured in kilograms, it's measured in newtons. 
People just use kilogram for weight because it's easier for normal people to understand. Oh, so what are kilograms used for? Your mass is measured in kilograms. Wait, let me get this down. So what's gravitational pull measured in? It's measured in meter per second per second, but it can also measure in kilometer per hour per hour. Are you sure? You said per second twice. Sure, I'm sure. Meters per second is speed, and gravitational pull is the change of speed in a certain amount of time. I don't get it. Well, the gravitational pull of the Earth is roughly 9.8 meters per second per second. This means an object falling because of gravity will increase speed for 9.8 meters per second in every second. This is called acceleration. Okay, so speed is measured in meters per second. Or kilometers per hour. Okay, and acceleration is measured in meters per second per second. Uh-huh. Alright, got it all down. By the way, what can you use to measure these forces? Well, you use those scales to measure your weight. But keep in mind that your weight can change if the gravity is different. Like in the moon, you will weigh less because there's less gravitational pull than the Earth. Oh yeah, what about mass and speed? Well, to measure mass, you can just use mass. Um, you can use the formula of weight equals mass times gravity. But that's just too hard, right? Well, you can just use the scale to measure your weight because the gravity wouldn't change. And for speed, just use a radar gun or something. Okay, thanks Angel. No props. Oh, eating time! Mmm, this is tasty. Hey Chris, can you pass me the salt? Yeah, sure mate. Why do objects slow down and stop? Life would be so much easier if they just kept on going. What you're talking about is a force called friction. It's a contact force that pushes against any other forces. So there's friction between the salt and the table? Uh huh. You see Chris, when the salt is going that way, and then the, the friction is pushing this way, this will cause the salt to slow down and then eventually stop. Oh, I get it. But why have it? It's just annoying. Without friction, we'll all be slipping around all over the place, and it won't allow us to walk properly. It also provides grip, and we can hold things firmly, and it also produces heat. Uh -huh. Valid point, Delon. Oh, fish sticks. Look at the time. I'm going to be late for my salsa dancing competition. Do you want to come? Yeah, sure. 